from imaging the depths of the earth to manufacturing, we're using computation and data to make better predictions and products. It's a good time. Exascale computing is on the horizon, and through the cloud, we've got immense computing resources at our fingertips. However, the software required for this can be incredibly complicated. It requires a combination of end-user expertise, mathematics, and computer science. All of this is coming together to form a near impenetrable technological barrier. Even to make small incremental steps forward is requiring massive investments into large teams of specialists. And this, of course, is a problem for SMEs and like, it is forming the, the, the skills crunch. So for me, I think this has got many parallels to the situation we had in computing back in the 1950s. Back in the 1950s, all software was still written in machine code. And this is quite a painful process. Then the big idea of the day was to develop higher level programming languages that are more human friendly and, like, and develop compilers. And this is software that automated the generation of the machine code. One of the first to be developed was actually Fortran, which amazingly is still in use today. However, the high level languages of yesterday are really today's low level languages. And for this reason, my research group at Imperial College London specialized in developing higher level programming languages that are bespoke to today's applications. And what this allows you to do is to get from, to write applications at a much quicker rate. So analogous to a pyramid, your application developer then only has to write the top layer of software in a domain specific language. And then we use a series of compilers to automatically generate all the other layers of uh, software. So in effect, the application developer might only have written 10 lines of code in the domain specific language and millions of lines of code are automatically generated. What this framework really enables is a genuine collaboration between domain specialists, mathematics, and computer science. It becomes possible to develop new complex applications without the need to understand the complexities of extra-scale computing. And because we're using software to write software, we can implement optimizations that just would be unthinkable for a human programmer to attempt. So we go away from the, from the notion that we have to develop a workforce of superhumans. Instead, what we do is we develop smarter technologies uh, to make us more productive. Automatically generated software can be made much more reliable and is already outperforming code that has been handwritten by experts. So we've already demonstrated this in the area of seismic imaging. The oil and gas industry collect petabytes of data and they use supercomputers to create images of the Earth's subsurface. Already we are able to generate in seconds uh, better codes than what teams of developers develop over a number of years. This approach, this framework, it also frees up specialists to innovate within their layer of the pyramid. Their innovations then can be quickly integrated for everyone's benefit. And one of the big payoffs here is that it greatly reduces the cost and the risk that large software development projects are really notorious for. The framework also allows expertise honed in universities to be fully engaged because like people then they don't need to start becoming experts in everything. In our particular case as well, we've also made our technology open source because we, we really strongly believe that open innovation is uh, really critical to the democratization of technology. But there's much more to this story than increased efficiencies by developing smarter tools that can suggest and guide optimizations, uh, we greatly extend human capabilities and ultimately this leads to better outcomes. It also makes training much easier. For big companies, this means higher uh, productivity, more innovation and lower costs, better, faster and cheaper. For SMEs, this means access to technology that would be otherwise inaccessible or too expensive to develop. So I believe that software writing software will disrupt every corner of the digital world, from monitoring the earth to like, designing more efficient energy devices. It's actually the sheer scale and complexity of legacy software that has uh, limited innovation and progress to date. And I think this is on the verge of being swept away by a whole new generation of software technologies. Back in the 1950s, many believed that people would continue programming in machine code. The progress that we see today was only made possible because humans fundamentally shifted how they programmed computers. Thank you.